Okay, so um, first of all, let me say a word about myself. I'm, um, I'm Val, and um, I am a geologist, and uh, Fiona, who is present here, is a former student of mine, and she lives in Aberdeen, and uh, we work together on old volcanoes in uh, Scotland and Ireland, and uh, I um, was a student in St. Andrews, and uh, Fiona was a student in Trinity College in Dublin, and so we share a long history together working on uh, the rocks in um, the small isles and beyond. So, and uh, yeah, uh, the Rum Ranger approached me a little while back about um, some um, outreach activities, and um, this is how this now comes together. What is the oldest volcano on Earth? Well, um, how to start that, I thought. Well, the Earth is very old. It's super old. It's 4.6 giga years old. That's 4,600 million years. And it's very hard to imagine. It's so old. And so I, I brought this visual up here. And you see, this is a spiral. And at the very bottom of the spiral, this is the oldest rocks we have on the planet. And there is volcanoes pretty much throughout the entire history. And there was more volcanoes at the beginning. So the little red part in the lower part here, that is actually, uh, I don't know whether you can see my cursor now, but this is actually the lowest uh, red part is where the volcano started. So we have volcanoes pretty much throughout Earth history and there has been more in the past. And uh, we're now at the very upper end. Uh, humans are very young in uh, the sense of uh, time of, of our planet. And, uh, well, we haven't really kind of seen all the volcanic history, but it's preserved in the rock record. And this is what geologists study. So um, here, for those of you who are firm with reading the clock, uh, somebody has uh, tried to put the Earth history onto a clock. And um, if um, humans kind of uh, put on that clock, they really come just a few seconds before midnight at the end of the day, while the Earth started a lot earlier, and volcanoes have been present pretty much throughout the history. And this leads me right to the next question. When were the first volcanoes active, and how long have volcanoes been on Earth? Well, as I said, right from the start, and actually there was a magma ocean early on in the history of the Earth. When the Earth came together, it started to actually melt, and uh, there was magma all over the planet. So this was before life was on our planet, before humans, long before humans came. So nobody got hurt, but the entire surface of the planet was covered with volcanoes and magma at some point. Because of this magma ocean, the uh, metal parts, the iron, was uh, migrating downwards into the center, and this is what we still have in the Earth core, and uh, the rocks were floating on top, and uh, they have formed the Earth crust. And this is why we have actually a layered planet with an inner core that is metal and a mantle that is solid rock, and the Earth crust, which is the plates we live on. How do volcanoes erupt? Uh, well, this is because there is a hot rock inside the Earth. And uh, if we look a little bit deeper, this was this diagram here. There is hot rock deep inside um, the Earth. And when this hot rock moves up because of some movements like plate boundaries, then the rock can actually melt and it makes magma. And this magma can rise up. It's a little less dense. It's like a lava lamp. It's a little less dense than the rock. And then it moves towards the surface. And there it pushes against the surface. And um, when uh, we have the magma reaching the surface, it's pushing the surface up a little. And uh, then eventually it will actually break through the surface in some places and make a volcano. So the uh, idea is a little bit that magma, in an analogy, would be like um, a fizzy drink that you've been shaken. If you open that, then the magma spurts out because there's a lot of overpressure inside this bottle then, and this is what happens with magma as well. So I hope this helps a little, and um, then uh, let's move on. What is the smallest volcano? And uh, the smallest volcano is actually what's called a mud volcano. 
And um, this is a little tiny volcano. And to give you a scale for this, um, it's that small. And um, there is basically warm mud and gas coming out of it. And the mud is very good for your skin. It's uh, what people put on their skins to uh, get a healthy skin. And uh, this one here is from Turkey, I think. And then it bubbles up. And uh, this is one of the smallest volcanoes that we know. So. How does the lava go from the center of the earth to, the ma to a mountain? This is a bit similar to what I said earlier. <clears throat> if we have uh, the hot mantle and the hot mantle moves around, it might melt. And this magma can then move up. And we call it magma as long as it's under the surface. And we call it lava as soon as it's above the surface of the earth. So if it's inside the volcano, we call it magma. And then the magma rises up and eventually it uh, will reach the surface in some cases, not always. Sometimes it gets stuck, and we'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about rum, and um, then uh, it might erupt. Where would you find volcanoes? Well, there are certain places where we get volcanoes and certain places where we don't get volcanoes. And um, here's a little map of the Earth, and uh, Scotland is just here, and... Um, and uh, here we have little earthquake swarms. That's the red dots. And volcanoes and earthquakes usually go together. And um, what we find here is that wherever we have earthquakes, we usually have volcanoes. So the red dots is also where most of the volcanoes are. And as you can see, well, luckily, there is no volcanoes at the moment in Sweden, where I'm based. And there is no volcanoes in Scotland either. But you can see that uh, where Iceland is located, uh, just between... Uh, uh, the UK and uh, Greenland, there we have volcanoes. And uh, then we have them along the mid-oceanic ridges and along the big mountain chains, and uh, there we have active volcanoes. And uh, this is why we can actually be quite safe from volcanoes where we live, where you and I live. And uh, when you live on Iceland or like now in the Canary Islands on La Palma, there you might have active volcanoes which can be a little devastating if you are too close or if your house is in the way of an eruption. What's the biggest volcano on Earth? And that's a fantastic question, actually. And the biggest volcano on Earth is actually Hawaii, the island of Hawaii. And um, it's only a little bit above sea level, but if you start counting its size from the ocean floor, it's something like 10 kilometers tall. This is as wide as the entire island of Rum. And um, this is the biggest volcano. So from ocean floor all the way up to the peak of Hawaii, the Hawaiian island, the main island, is bigger than Mount Everest. And uh, I thought I'll bring this into context because we know of a yet bigger volcano, but it's not on Earth. It's actually on planet Mars. It's called Olympus Mons. It's so big, you have kind of barely any idea how big it is. So I brought you a picture for it. So this is Olympus Mons. And it's hundreds of kilometers wide and 26 kilometers tall. To give you a feeling of this, um, I um, found a diagram where Olympus Mons has been put on top of the map of France. And this volcano is as wide as the entire country of France. So this is the biggest volcano we have ever seen as humans. There may be some bigger ones on some of the other planets, which we haven't seen yet, but that's the biggest one we know of. So the Hawaiian volcanoes are really big, but this one is even bigger. Do you get volcanoes in Scotland? And, uh, well, I think I partly answered that. The answer is not at the moment, and that's a good thing. But there has been volcanoes in the past. And uh, when you look at this map here, it's a map of rocks, a geological map. So people color the map in um, different colors for different rocks. And all the reds and pink colors, that is rocks that come from volcanoes. And you see there is uh, rum and uh, there's the small eyes, they're tiny here. You can maybe see it here. Or can I, I don't know whether you can see my cursor or not, but uh, I think um, 
Here is uh, the small isles, and uh, the, there's pink and dark red, and that means it's volcanic rock. But they are 60 million years old. That's a long, long time. There was already no dinosaurs left um, at that point, but it was just after the dinosaurs got extinct that these volcanoes erupted. And this is the youngest volcanoes in the whole of Scotland. There's even older ones. They go back even further in time, like there's some in Fife and there's some here in the Central Highlands, but they're even, even older. So the youngest volcanoes are here, Sky, Rum, and Egg, and Muck, and Agnamurkin, and Mull. That's the youngest volcano. But they are long extinct, and um, there is no danger from them at the moment. How long does it take for lava to become rock? Well, that's a really fascinating question, because um, I actually got this in an exam once as a student, and I had to make a calculation how long it takes. And um, it's important because imagine lava goes over a road and you want to clear the road afterwards. You need to calculate how long it takes for the lava to cool down before you can actually remove it with a shuffle or with a digger. And the calculation uh, was that if the lava is one meter thick and it has a temperature of about a thousand degrees, then you can start working with it after about 10 days, a week to 10 days. If it's thicker, it will take a lot longer, of course. So, and when you think of the current activity, like on Iceland or on the Canary Islands, on La Palma, there, the lava will have to, you know, be around for 10 days or so before they can start moving it away. Are there volcanoes in China? I actually had to kind of do some homework on this question, and uh, there is there is volcanoes in China, and um, I've never seen them. I visited China two years ago, but I didn't go to see volcanoes, and um, this is one of the volcanoes in China, and it's in northern China, close to the uh, Korean border, and uh, it's called Shanghai Shan. So here's another picture of uh, this volcano. This is the crater, which has a lake now. And um, this is an active volcano, and it erupted about in uh, 1903, so a little over 100 years ago. And um, this is uh, very interesting, I thought. How many places in the world are, are there volcanoes? Well... There's about 1,500 active volcanoes at the moment, and um, they are distributed pretty much along those lines I showed earlier, these red lines that uh, show um, the distribution of the plates, and this is where you get volcanoes. Yeah, Rum is uh, one of the larger volcanoes, and um, Sky and Mull and Artnamurkin are other big volcanoes. And the beauty about Rum is that it exposes, it brings to the fore the inside of a volcano. And um, here the rocks on Rum, they're actually from the belly of a big volcano, and it's a long gone volcano. And you can still uh, work this out when you look at the rocks carefully. So this is a uh, rum seam from egg, actually, from the boat in between egg and uh, rum. And uh, there you see the former roof of the volcano, and it's broken away. So you can look into the belly of the volcano. And I've uh, drawn the roof outline here, approximately. So we are looking from uh, this side here, and uh, this is the, the bowels of the volcano, and this is the roof that we still see. And uh, this would have gone over the volcano. Did the sea levels drop when the Rum volcano erupted? Yes, I, uh, I, I, I thought about that. And uh, the thing is that um, um, it probably didn't drop. It actually was rising because if you grow a volcano out of the sea, then you push the water up. But um, um, usually I would think that uh, the sea is a huge uh, body of water and volcanoes are although they're big, comparatively small, so the sea level would have changed, you're right with that, but it would have likely uh, actually gone up a tiny little bit, a few millimeters, because of the rum volcano. When the rum volcano erupted, 
Did it create new life on the island? And where did the soil come from? So, yes, this is an interesting question. And the answer is actually when the Volrum volcano erupted, it was really, really unpleasant. It was very nasty at the beginning and it made a big eruption. And uh, there was no humans living at that point. So uh, nobody, uh, no human got hurt. But all the other creatures on the island probably died. So actually, uh, initially, it would have killed everything that was alive on the island. And it would have looked a bit like this image here, a big eruption. Only later, when the volcano was extinct with uh, the ash and uh, the rocks would have slowly become soil. And now Rome is very fertile. You have forest there. You have uh, a beautiful kind of landscape there. But this came later. So during the volcanic period, the Rum volcano was not a nice place to be, and um, it would have been very dangerous for all things alive there. When did the island volcano erupt? What year? Here I added two stars, and the uh, yellow star is uh, the one uh, where humans came onto our planet. So when you think that the Earth started to evolve from the lowest part of the spiral all the way up, then uh, humans came very, very late. And um, the Rum volcano actually erupted at the Red Star about 60 million years ago. And this was just after the dinosaurs died and uh, long before humans came. So this is when the Rum volcano really happened. And it is amongst the youngest volcanoes in Scotland. And therefore, we can all actually sleep quite calmly that there's likely no volcanic eruption in Scotland, or for that matter, also not in Sweden, where I live. How did the volcano get pushed out of the water? I think there might have been lava underneath the sand, and the volcano rock kept on going up and up and up. Up, it pushed the lava up, and then the volcano erupted. That's a very good question because we, we usually think that volcanoes just grow on top of the Earth's surface, but it's not quite true. You're actually quite right. Volcanoes push things up as well. And um, this is a bit complicated and you don't need to look for all the details. But indeed, before the rum volcano started to erupt, it was pushing up the rocks. And there is some rocks high up in the mountains that we usually find much, much lower down on rum. So what happened is that the magma trying to come up was pushing rocks upwards. And uh, we see that now that there is rocks that have been uplifted. And you can still see them in the mountains if you know the rocks well. And you can even work out from how deep they came. And some of the rum rocks have been uplifted by something like a whole kilometer to our understanding. So, and later on, we had the volcano growing, and it would, uh, would look a little bit like that. We have the layered rocks of central rum, and then there was a big volcano sitting on top, and it would have erupted uh, very much like Icelandic volcanoes, and uh, some of the eruptive materials were then distributed over some of the other islands, actually. There would have been some material going to Kana, and to Muck, and to Egg, and uh, this uh, would have all come from the big rum volcano. So, and um, this is how the rum volcano kind of uh, looks today. This is the inside and all the colored rocks here. That is volcanic rock and the gray rocks. This is older rock into which the rum volcano was in place. And if you look at uh, some of these orange rocks, they are rocks that were pushed up and they come from a little bit deeper. They are close to these orange rocks. We have material that has been pushed upwards within the volcano's guts, within the belly of the volcano, if you will. Why are volcanoes called volcanoes? That, where does the name volcano come from? So um, this goes back to the time of the Greeks and the Romans. And there was um, a, a son of the major god of the Greeks, Zeus, he was called, and uh, he had a son called Hephaestus, or the Romans called him Vulcan. And apparently he was a very ugly baby and uh, his mother didn't like him, so she gave him away to be raised by someone else, a sea nymph. And so he grew up um, 
in um, uh, the water or close to the, to the water. And at some point, he found a campfire at the beach and he realized that uh, this campfire could burn and actually smelter rocks. And so he started to work with uh, smeltering rocks and making metals. And eventually, he created a big forge under what's nowadays Etna Volcano. So, and this is the god Vulcan. And whenever he works in his forge, then the volcano Etna is erupting. And actually, Etna is erupting right now as we speak. So Vulcan is busy making swords and armor and jewelry for the gods down there inside the volcano. So this is uh, where the word volcano comes from, from ancient stories from the Greek and Romans. What's the name of the volcano that made rum? Very good question. We just call it the rum volcano. It's very simple. But uh, if I could choose, I would actually call it the Troll Volcano because of Trollaval. And um, my name is Valentin Troll and people call me Val. So people call me Val Troll. And uh, I always think that Trollaval is my best mountain ever. It's my favorite mountain. And this is uh, myself visiting and Fiona was there as well. This is a few years ago with Trollaval in the background and there's Harris Bay. And um, so, but the simple answer is it's called the Rum Volcano or geologists call it the Rum Volcanic Complex. It doesn't have a, a, a different name than that, I'm afraid. other small isles part of a volcano yes absolutely so um i have a little map here and uh, it's in different colors but here on the map you see these red dots here and this is sky and rum and uh Art american mull these are big volcanoes and then there was volcanic fields lava fields associated with them and uh muck and uh also egg they are lava fields, they are outpourings of lava, partly from actually Art American, partly from sky, and a little bit also from rum. And uh, rum was a big central volcano. So in a way, there has been a number of volcanoes and the small isles are volcanic, but they were not strictly big volcanoes themselves, uh, apart from rum in the center of the small isles, which is the biggest of the small isles as well. So that was the biggest volcano. How was the lava created inside the volcano? Great, we touched this. We got a similar question from the egg children earlier. And um, here, lava is created when we melt rock. Rock inside the earth is solid. And when it moves around and gets a little too close to the surface, it starts to melt and make magma. And this magma can rise up like in a lava lamp. It rises up to the surface and it can then break the surface if it finds a good spot for that and then it can erupt. So here we can create a volcano then once the magma breaks through the surface. Are there any other volcanoes in the United Kingdom? That's a very good question. And I said earlier, there is no active volcanoes anywhere in Scotland and there's none in England either or in Wales or in Ireland. And... Uh, there's old volcanoes, however, and I talked a little bit about the red dots on this uh, rock map here, on the geology map. Um, and, uh, but these are all very, very old volcanoes. None of them is active. They're all extinct. But having said that, the UK has an active volcano. And there's a little island, and um, it's in the Caribbean. And um, there we have a big volcano. It's Montserrat, and there is a volcano called Sufria Hills the Sulphur Hills. And um, this little island in the Caribbean has an active volcano, and I'm showing a picture here of Sufria Hills volcano. And it actually erupted not so long ago, about 20 years ago. So uh, it's a little uh, longer than, uh, than uh, uh, you guys are around, but uh, it's geologically very young. And uh, there was actually quite some devastation when it erupted. People had to be leaving their homes and some of the villages were destroyed when it erupted. So it's a big volcano and it's active. It still smokes away every day and it smells of sulfur. It doesn't smell very good, you know. So and uh, this is the only active volcano in the United Kingdom right now. How hot is lava? 
Dylan thinks three thousand degrees Celsius. Andrew thinks three thirty-three thousand billion. Bell thinks two hundred forty degrees Celsius. Dougal thinks one one thousand and sixty degrees Celsius. And I'm sure there's more guesses there. You know who's right there? Well, Dougal is right. Um, the uh, temperature of lava, depending on exactly how it's made, is about 800 to 1200 degrees Celsius. So 1060 is right in the middle. So Dougal, um, if I was there, I would give you the, the lollipop price now because you got that right. How did the big volcanic rocks and boulders get out of the volcano? A volcano is very powerful. It's got a lot of gas inside, it's got a lot of overpressure, and it can throw things out of the volcano. And here is a picture from an active volcano, and you see the, uh, it's at night, so you can see it very well. You see how the things are being thrown out of the volcano, and we call them lava bombs, and Fiona is showing one there. And they can be meter-sized, and the volcano can throw them out, and they can fly for, oh, many hundred meters from the volcanic vent. And um, they can then fall on people's heads. So if you're too close to an active volcano, you must, must be very careful. You must put a hard hat on, because otherwise it might actually, yeah, end up not so good for you. So this is how big boulders can come outside, out of, from a volcano, and then lie outside the volcanic vent area. I hope that answers the question. What rare and interesting rocks do we have on the island? Okay, wonderful. So, and uh, I will give you a very kind of, um, uh, I'll give you a quick overview now. I have to mention a few complicated rock names, but uh, I'll try to keep it simple. So, uh, first of all, here is um, a geology map, a rock map of the island. And um, the different rocks have different colors. There is the blue and uh, light blue and greenish rocks. And then there is the more kind of pinkish and uh, partly orangey rocks. And uh, they're of different type. And uh, let's, start with, uh, let's start with the pinkish rocks. In reality, they're gray. They're only colored pink on the map. And if you walk from Kinloch up to uh, Corridu, then uh, you come across some of these rocks. So just before you reach the dark rocks of Central Rum, there's these gray rocks, and I have a picture here. We call it the Northern Marginal Complex. That's part of the old roof of the volcano. And on that roof, we have some of these uh, gray rocks, and they have erupted. They were formed by glowing avalanches. And uh, they are, I think, quite spectacular. And um, they tell that the Rum volcano was really explosive when it was a young volcano. And uh, then in central Rome, we have these uh, darker rocks, these uh, more kind of brownish and uh, dark greenish rocks. And uh, this is the Long Loch area. And if you look at the rocks in detail, you find that they are brown and they have layers. And these layers, they are formed inside the volcano. So when the magma was inside the volcano, many crystals were settling out inside the magma. They were raining out, and then they were lying down on the floor of the magma chamber, and they made these layers. So this is the belly of the volcano, and these rocks are called gabbros and peridodites, but we don't have to worry so much about the names right now. And here's another picture of these layered rocks, and they're a bit like... Uh, uh, sandstones, but they formed inside the volcano in a hot state. So it's quite spectacular, and this is a rock type for which Rom is famous amongst geologists worldwide. So, and the most uh, valuable rock on Rom, the most uh, precious rock on Rom, is actually a rock called chromite. This is something you find um, up on Halival, for example, and uh, it's got a uh, metal in it, and that's chromium. And here's a rock, it's um, on the right-hand side. It's whitish in the lower part and greenish in the upper part. And there's this dark layer in between. It's a bit wobbly, but that's the chromite. And I'm showing you a picture from the microscope. When you look at rocks under the microscope, they get all colorful. And there's these 
dark little dots, and that's the chromite, and that's really, really valuable. Now, rum is a nature reserve, so we can't take the rocks out there, but um, there is uh, a lot of the chromite that was washed into the sea of Harris Bay, and if we ever need more chromite, then the rocks of Harris Bay in the sea, they have a lot of this chromite mineral, so we could get it if we really need it. So we know that there are some really valuable rocks on rum. Now, having said this, there's something else on rum. Um, today it's not so valuable, but it used to be really valuable to the people in the past, and that is the bloodstone rocks. So, and uh, the bloodstone um, rocks, they have a very strange character. They break really sharp, and uh, early people were using this to make arrowheads and uh, spear tips and things like that. So, that's the coolest rocks on rum, and uh, I hope that helps you a little bit. How do trees survive in, on the island made from a volcano? It's a very interesting question, and uh, we said earlier that lava is really, really hot, and it would be up to uh, 1,200 degrees, and all trees I know of, they burn at that temperature. And here's a picture from the eruption that's currently happening in the Canary Islands in La Palma, and there you see the houses and the trees are actually burning in the lava. So you will find, like on Mull, you will find places where there has been old trees caught in lava, and then you find, find little bits of coal, that's the burned remnants of the trees inside the lava. But the trees usually don't survive the lava, I'm afraid, so they will burn really, really quickly when the hot lava hits the trees. Can volcanoes be used for energy production? like heating homes? Absolutely, they can. I mean, active volcanoes, they produce a lot of heat, and uh, this will heat the groundwater in the surrounding of the volcano, and then uh, if you are managing to channel the groundwater, for example, in pipes, you can have cold water being pumped down into the volcanic area, and then it comes up as warm water, and you can harvest the heat from that, either for district heating, or you can actually generate electricity from it. And here is a, a, an image from New Zealand, the Wairaki power plant, and uh, this is used to make energy. And um, the steam, the hot steam that's uh, forming from the water close to the magma is what then drives a turbine, and this allows you to make electricity. And believe it or not, uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of um, um, power plants like this also on Iceland, and here's a few pictures. And when the water is no longer clean but warm, they use it actually even for swimming. So here you have uh, places like a, a warm swimming pool on Iceland, and this has close to a geothermal power plant. And they heat, for example, greenhouses on uh, Iceland. and Believe it or not, but Iceland grows more bananas than Spain because of that. They can heat their greenhouses and they can grow bananas on Iceland. Although it's usually very cold, but inside the greenhouses, they can actually um, grow fruit, very tropical fruit even, and this is what geothermal energy is good for. Have you ever been in a volcano plane? So I've been in a plane flying over volcanoes. And uh, I've also been in a helicopter. This is a picture actually from La Palma where the current eruption is going on. The picture is two years old. I was there with a um, television crew and we were flying over the volcanoes. And I have some little uh, videos on YouTube if you're ever interested flying over volcanoes. And then you can look inside the volcano from above. What is lava? So what is lava? Lava is basically molten rock. If you heat up a rock uh, to a thousand degrees, it melts and it becomes uh, lava at the surface of the earth. And if the rock, the lava cools, it becomes a rock again. So, and uh, this is very interesting. And uh, many hundred years ago, people were discussing how um, these rocks would form. And some people felt that volcanic rocks actually don't come from volcanoes. They said they come out of seawater. And other people said, no, they come from volcanoes. And 
there was a, a gentleman in Edinburgh, Mr. Hall, and he tried to, he made a, a furnace and he put a rock in there and he heated this up until the rock was melting. And then he poured out the pot with the melt and then the rock cooled down or the magma cooled down very quickly and it made a rock again. And so he proved back then that these volcanic rocks come from a volcano. They come from a molten rock and they will go back to rock once it cools down. So this is what magma really is. I hope this helps. Why does lava erupt? That's a very good question. And I think we are still sometimes uh, troubled by that, uh, but I think the basic idea is that um, when you think of the rock and the magma, the molten rock, then you will find once the rock is molten, it's a bit lighter than the rock, the parental rock where it's coming from. And then um, it will actually, the magma will actually rise up next to the parent rock where it's from. So this will bring it upwards. We call it buoyancy. And um, this lift that the magma experiences, this will bring the magma to the surface and there it erupts. So it's the difference between the rock and the magma that comes from melting the rock. And that difference allows the magma to rise up and then it erupts at the surface. And very close to the surface, what happens is that the little bit of gas that's actually in the magma, it comes out as well and makes bubbles. And if you have a lot of bubbles, it's a bit like a fizzy drink that was shaken too much. Then it spurts out if you open the bottle too quickly. And this is how volcanoes erupt in the end. Then it becomes lava, exactly. At the surface of the earth, the magma underground, once it's on the surface, we call it lava. And then it can flow at the surface and make a lava flow. And uh, this is what uh, can be very problematic. If your house is in the way of the lava flow, then, uh, yeah, or a tree then um, this is not so good. Then the tree might burn. And uh, hopefully uh, all the people are gone already when the lava comes so that nobody gets hurt. How many volcanoes are on the Earth? So uh, how many volcanoes are there on Earth? I think I mentioned it earlier. There is 1,500 active volcanoes. It's quite a lot. And every day, doesn't matter what day, Sunday or Friday or Tuesday, every day we have about 20 volcanoes erupting on the planet. So whenever you think about it, somewhere on the planet is about 20 volcanoes erupting. I heard that muck, egg and rum were all part of volcanoes. How did the island split up and what does it mean? Um, how did the island split up? Well, it's because there was a central volcano, Rum, and then it had lava outpourings, and there were several other central volcanoes as well, Sky and Artin American. And they all produced lava flowing down the flanks, and eventually the sea came in between the volcanoes and washed parts of it away. This is why we now have islands, and uh, they're no longer connected. And the sea level was likely a little bit lower when the volcanoes formed. Now the sea has risen. And this is why we have to take a boat to go from one island to the other now. How do volcanoes erupt underwater? Because lava and water are opposites. That's a really good question, actually. And um, if the water is really, really deep, then uh, the lava or the magma that comes to the surface of the, um, of the ocean will just flow a little bit, but it will chill very quickly and it will get stiff very quickly. And um, then uh, when uh, the magma is, uh, or the lava is very close to the surface of the water, then you actually get explosions because then the water will evaporate super fast and makes a lot of steam and then you get little explosions. Why not on ice? Can it erupt then? Oh, yes, ice is a problem as well. You're absolutely right. In, in Iceland, well, Iceland uh, has a lot of ice. Then mm -hmm. if we have uh, lava coming out of the earth under a glacier, mm -hmm. then you can actually melt the glacier ice and then you get water and it interacts with the magma and then it might actually be quite unpleasant as well. It makes a lot of steam and poofs a lot. So... It's a bit like putting some uh, droplets of water on some hot metal or so. It goes 
and uh, this is what happens. But in the deep ocean, this mm -hmm. doesn't happen because there the pressure of water is so high that you don't get little explosions. What sort of rocks do you get around volcanoes? And uh, well, I showed you some rocks on Rum earlier. We get um, these light gray rhyolitic rocks, as we call them. They usually form from explosive eruptions. And then we get these dark rocks, the basalts, or if they form underground, we call them gavros. And uh, they have different proportions of minerals. And that's the only kind of variation that we see there. And uh, these rocks make very good building stones. So people like to build with volcanic rocks because they're very strong rocks and they make really good houses, for example. And uh, they also make good pavements. So in the old days, before we used tarmac, we used the volcanic rock to pave the streets because uh, if the horses go over them and the carriages, the rocks would be really sturdy. They would have a long life. And uh, that um, is a good quality of volcanic rock. How do volcanoes explode? I think we covered some of this, and this is a bit like the gases coming out, making bubbles, and then it's a, like a fizzy drink. So, and uh, are there any volcanoes in Tasmania? Whoa, there are some old volcanoes in Tasmania. But I've never been to Tasmania. I uh, don't know about uh, these old volcanoes there. But to my knowledge, there's no real active volcanoes there, at least, at least at the present day. How many times do volcanoes erupt? Uh, that depends on the volcano. Some volcanoes erupt a lot. I have a um, special friend of a volcano in Indonesia. It's called Merapi, and it erupts every five years. It's so frequently erupting that uh, it's almost continuously erupting. And then we have volcanoes like the one in the Canary Islands. It only erupts every 50 years. So... There, usually as a human, you can only see one eruption. Uh, if you're lucky, maybe two. And uh, this is a, a, a long repose period, we call it. It's a volcano that takes a lot of time to fill up again. So depending on the volcano and how exactly it's fed from underneath, it may be erupting in very quick succession, or it may take a long time in between eruptions. Are there met? Any volcanoes in Scotland? And actually, I think we've covered this in part. The answer is no. Uh, there's no active volcanoes in Scotland, but there used to be volcanoes in the old days, many, many millions of years ago. And uh, volcanoes were a fundamental part of making the rocks that make up Scotland today. Will rum ever erupt again? I don't think so. Uh, Rum is, um, is um, a volcano that's extinct. It's dead, if you will. And um, it will not erupt again in any near future. But the source of magma that made Rum is still active, believe it or not. It still makes volcanoes. But because of the plates moving, it's no longer under Scotland. And you know where the source of the Rum volcano is today? It's under Iceland. Iceland is the younger brothers, if you will, of the Scottish volcanoes of Rum and Sky and Adnamurkin and Mull, and it still makes volcanoes today. In fact, there's one volcano on, um, on Iceland that I think is actually how I picture Rum as a volcano when it was active, and that's Katla Volcano in southeast Iceland. It's almost identical in terms of the rocks um, to what we see on Rum, and it behaves like uh, rum would have behaved. And uh, if I had to kind of uh, find an example of how rum was as a volcano, Katla volcano on Iceland would be my best example for that. When did rum fully cool down and become solid rock? Well, the volcano on rum, it was active for about one million years. This is a lot of years. You know, um, a human lives about 70, 80 years. And um, if you think about um, uh, the Roman Empire, we talked about uh, the Roman god Vulcan earlier. That was about 2,000 years ago. And uh, then if you think further, um, um, one million years is a long time. And strangely enough, this is about the lifetime also of Icelandic volcanoes. So Rum was active for a long, long time uh, back then, but this was 
60 million years ago. And Rome was pretty much solid at about 59 million years before present. It's large numbers, I know, but um, this was um, many million years before humans even came on the planet. So there is no kind of worry about Rome becoming an active volcano again. And it's solid and is being drawn down by erosion now for a long, long time. This is where we have the beautiful valleys on Rome. And uh, this is the same, by the way, for the other small isles uh, where we have erosion and it makes the beautiful rolling landscape for most parts. And uh, there is no real risk that uh, these will be becoming volcanically active again. But of course, they were made from volcanoes back in the past. The Mars volcano, can it erupt? Oh yes, absolutely, it can erupt, but um, we haven't seen any eruptions on Mars, but uh, in theory it can erupt. And if it erupts, it might be quite a big eruption because it's a very big volcano. And uh, some people think that big volcanic eruptions on Mars, for example, could throw out boulders. We talked about boulders coming out of volcanoes. And if the explosion is big enough, some of these boulders may fly out into space and some could end up on other planets. So we have some fragments that come from Mars and maybe they come from a big volcano on Mars. How is the volcanic rock formed in volcanoes to make lava? Yes, the volcanic, uh, well, the earth mantle is hot. Deep in the earth, it's really warm. And uh, the rock that is hot, um, that can melt if it comes close to the surface. And there it makes magma first. And the magma can rise up. And then once it comes to the surface, it's becoming lava. And you can reverse this process by taking a rock and putting it into a furnace. And then it will start to melt when it's hot enough. And actually, and there's little metals inside rocks like the chromite on Rome. Uh, if we melt the rock, then the chromite will melt out and we can get the metal out. This is how we produce iron and copper and things like that from volcanic rocks. Most of the metals we have, when we have a car, for example, there is iron in there. That comes from volcanic rocks that we have melted again. And then the metal actually smelts us and uh, we can smelt it out and take it away and form it into something new. Do rocks come from outer space to Earth? So this is fascinating. And indeed, I mean, this can happen. I mean, uh, let's see what I can do that. Um, I actually... I actually have a really fascinating rock here, and I'm going to show it to you. Hopefully this works. Here. Can you see this little rock here? This is a meteorite. This is a meteorite that comes from outer space, and it has landed here on Earth. And it is actually originally uh, from a volcano from another planet. And you're right, uh, these things happen on other planets, and they can produce big eruptions. And uh, also sometimes there is um, asteroids and um, bodies out there lumping together, collapsing with each other. It's like um, um, a traffic jam out there in outer space. And uh, then fragments can fall onto other planets. And sometimes we get them here on Earth. And uh, then we call them meteorites once they're fallen down. Okay, great. I think um, I think we've covered most of the volcano questions. I hope uh, this was useful. Also, we had some technical challenges at the beginning, but I think it worked reasonably well in the end. I hope so, at least. Yeah, thank you so much. Then I will say thank you to everybody. Thanks for your interest. I enjoyed that. And so I'll say goodbye to everybody. Bye-bye. All the best.